Crimson Glory was formed in 1983 in Sarasota, Florida. Guitarist Ben Jackson and drummer Dana Burnell had been playing together since 1979 in a band called Pierced Arrow, then Beowulf, and finally Crimson Glory with several lineup changes along the way. Bassist Jeff Lords and guitarist John Drenning would officially come on in 1983, as well as vocalist John Patrick McDonald, better known as Midnight. I used to live in the mountains in California, and there was a girl there that I met was a spiritual guide, and she said that my spiritual name should be Midnight. Oh, well, that's kind of a nice little story. A week later, she went over a cliff in her car and died. Oh. Well, anyway, this lineup of Crimson Glory would spend the next few years or so just rehearsing their material and forming their look. For five years, we rehearsed as a band, not gigging in any clubs at all. So it was practice and practice for a Never long time. Never getting out of the practice room. Right. Practically. So we're just now getting out, yeah. This unique look included wearing full face masks all the time. Well, you know, behind the whole band, we have a mysterious image to everyone. We, want to, we wish to remain anonymous. We don't want to be pho photographed without the mask on ever. While they were kind of an odd idea, the masks did help Crimson Glory stand out. It's the whole image of the band that we want to keep, you know, and we, we got the mask to have a, a visual edge over all the other bands in the world, you know. We wanted to make sure we looked different, that we didn't look like anybody else. With a different look and solid material ready to go, Crimson Glory would release their self-titled debut album in 1986. After the release, Crimson Glory were immediately met with comparisons to Queensryche. When your album first came out, they said, you must listen to this, it's really good, it sounds like Queensryche. We thought that if we have to be compared to someone, that that's a very good comparison because we like Queensryche and they're in the progressive vein, such yes. as we are. There are some progressive elements to Crimson Glory, so it's similar to Queensryche that way, but the comparisons mostly seem to be between Midnight and Queensryche vocalist Jeff Tate. We've played the kind of music that we play, and I've sang like I sing before we even heard of Queensryche. Yeah. So they, oh, really? yeah, they had no influence on us. I do agree that they're the same type of singer, but beyond that, I think they have their own unique qualities. I have a more aggressive voice. I have, uh, I can be mean with my mm -hmm. voice, and also I can be clean. Whereas Jeff Tate, I think, is more bound to just the clean. But musically, Crimson Glory also has a strong gothic theme in their sound and presentation that Queensryche doesn't. But with the dual guitars and awesome solos, along with soaring vocals and unique theatrical elements, it's also easy to see the similarities to Queensryche. Crimson Glory's second album, Transcendence, would come out nearly two years later. Transcendence pushes the progressive side even more with elaborate musical passages and unusual chord progressions. One of the reasons we titled the album Transcendence is because it's a basic philosophy for the band. We want to transcend the previous records, we yeah. want to keep developing and, and um, growing. Yeah, those full face masks didn't last that long, mostly due to how hot they could get on stage. Between albums, they moved to half masks, as seen in the video for their hit single, Lonely. It's It starts off with a soft, almost romantic opening, and a lady who can't get to sleep. But then the track really kicks in. The 
there's not a whole lot to the video. We see Crimson Glory playing on some lit up box things with Midnight's legs spread absolutely as far as they'll go. And there's a lot of smoke, which I like. But the best part is still the epic chorus. I absolutely love this track, right down to Ben and John's solos. But apparently the band wasn't super happy with the lackluster video. The one that's on TV now right now is a European release and we feel like we could do a much better job at it. Sure. And, you know, we want to hit the American market, you know, the right way. Regardless of the lack of music videos, Crimson Glory had a growing fan base and seemed to be in a good place. But at the end of the Transcendence tour, Ben and Dana would leave the band. Grunge was starting to come in and they were trying to phase out a lot of things. So Ben and I, you know, decided to leave and do the Parish thing and Crimson was going to try to move on and go in a different direction. I mean, I wasn't really feeling where they were going, neither was Ben, but they were trying to change with the times and it didn't work out, but they were trying. I think Dana and I were really wanting the band to, to, to line up to stay the same and the music to continue in the direction of the first two but you know others had other ideas there maybe we, we weren't all on the same page crimson glory's third album strange and beautiful would come out in 1991 dana um our old drummer and ben our rhythm guitarists aren't with us anymore they went uh they went off and they're doing working on their own project now mm. and so we have uh just a new drummer ravi jacodia with ravi jacodia on drums they'd continue on as a four piece and drop the masks entirely we're like artists painting with different colors now uh, before we couldn't really sing love song with a mask on i mean you know it's kind of it's kind of stupid or you couldn't we we're kind of uh we kind of trapped ourselves with the mask in a way so we really were waiting for this album to just be free. And so now we're painting with, you know, multicolors, and it's great. You know, so many different emotions and, and uh, styles we can mix into the music that we've always wanted to do. Rather than a grunge sound, Crimson Glory goes into a more blues-based, Led Zeppelin kind of direction here. It's still heavy, and it's uh, but it's heavy in a different way. It's not heavy in the the thrash vein kind of way. It's mm -hmm. heavier in um, a bluesy kind uh, of way. But we feel it's still Crimson Glory overall. There's still a lot of colorful themes on the record, but it's more of a heartfelt thing. There's also a lot more focus on the drums here rather than the guitar. Guitars used to be the focal point of the band, basically, and that's how we started writing the song. But now we're concentrating a lot more on the rhythms. And um, Ravi has a lot different, a lot of Latin influences in jazz and funk. We felt like we needed to move more out of the heavy metal vein into the rock and roll. The single for the album was the funky, bluesy track, "The Chant." Strange and Beautiful is definitely different than Crimson Glory's previous material, and I wouldn't say it's a metal album, but it's still pretty good. Midnight's voice is amazing, and the guitar work is still nice, even if it's not as flashy as before.
Strangely, just before starting a tour for the album, Midnight would suddenly leave the band and pretty much the music industry altogether. The remaining Crimson Glory members would recruit David Van Landing to handle vocals for a short U.S. tour. <laughs> After the tour, John, Jeff, and Ravi would record an album as Crush with singer Billy Martinez, and then another album as Erotic Liquid Culture with David Van Landing again. But then John, Jeff, and Ben would decide to reform Crimson Glory. They'd release Astronomica in 1999 as Crimson Glory again, now with Wade Black on vocals. In a 2009 interview, John Drenning said, Astronomica was originally written and recorded for Midnight. He had agreed to sing that record, but when it came time to actually start recording the album, Midnight was going through a difficult time in his life. He felt that he couldn't do it and he just wasn't in the condition to do a whole record. So we were in the position where we either had to shelve the whole album and do nothing, or finish it. Jeff and I elected to go ahead and finish the album with Wade, but our first choice was Midnight. And to be fair, Wade handles some of the older Crimson Glory material pretty well. But unfortunately, his voice just doesn't seem like a great fit for a lot of the music on the Astronomica album. Some of the guitar work is cool, but there's an overall mechanical sound to the album too. Steve Wackles from Sabotage is credited on drums, but it's actually a drum machine. He was scheduled to join them on tour, but after a few warm-up shows in Europe, Crimson Glory broke up again. But in 2005, Midnight would reappear with no real explanation as to where he'd been the past 15 years. What happened all those years? Where have you been? Hiding. From whom? Everyone. What for? <laughs> That's why they call it hiding, because you don't tell. <laughs> Midnight had been working on his own solo material, but also seemed to be open to rejoining Crimson Glory. Crimson Glory Gate is open. Um, we are talking, and uh, we are planning on um, maybe doing an album here very soon. Yeah. With Midnight back, Crimson Glory started writing a new album and there were apparently even plans to re-record Astronomica with Midnight on vocals. This would all fall through when their new record label, Black Lotus, went out of business. The original lineup did reunite for a 2006 show in Greece, however, but a 2007 DUI arrest would cause Crimson Glory to cut professional ties with Midnight for good. Sadly, in 2009, Midnight would pass away from a stomach aneurysm, apparently after refusing to go to the hospital for four days. Crimson Glory would try to regroup again in 2010 with drummer-turned-vocalist Todd LaTorre. Todd seems like a great fit, and they did manage to get out one single in 2012, Garden of Shadows. But with little movement towards recording a full album, 
Todd would leave Crimson Glory in a somewhat ironic twist to replace Jeff Tate in Queensryche. While Crimson Glory is technically on hold, it seems unlikely that there will be any new material coming out, but you never know. For now, check out Crimson Glory from 1986 and Transcendence from 1988. Hope you enjoyed this look back at Crimson Glory. If you haven't heard them or dismissed them because of the masks, I encourage you to give their 80s albums a listen. The tracks are catchy as hell, and Midnight is an outstanding vocalist. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time. I'm gonna tell you what, we've been all around the world. You guys are crazy. We'll see ya.